years ago. We serve 140 students. Um, all of our students come from the South Mountain area. That includes like Levine all the way through up to Tempe, basically. Um, we have sixth and seventh grade this year growing. We hope to fifth through eighth grade next year. We haven't got the fifth part approved yet. So sixth through eighth, certainly uh, we intend to go down to fifth, but we can get that approval. And um, we are really, really excited to be doubling our enrollment next year, serving that many more students and offering that many more kids choice, which is what this is all about. Ready, set, go. Bad in Rouge, Louisiana, Indianapolis, Indiana, and Columbus is the capital of Ohio. Stop. Good morning. I'm Eileen Sigmund. I'm head of the Arizona Charter Schools Association. In Arizona, we have 510 charter schools serving approximately 120,000 students, which is 12.6% of the students the highest percentage of any state in the nation, and 25% of our schools are charter schools. Rachel's school, I do want to brag on. Super, super loud crowd, ready, set, go! Sing! Rise up here and all we do! Our oh, respect for me and you! I integrity no matter what! D, discipline is our set! E, excellence is the key! Phoenix, allegiance, academy! Peace to you! Rachel and her team of excellent teachers grew students at 80% or above, meaning that she was at the very high end of the spectrum in how they grew their kids. Math, I believe, and that was math, which is a life skill we're all mo moving our kids towards. And then reading, which is the other measurement, was in the 70s. So it was a phenomenal score, and I really just want to brag on that because Rachel comes from Teach for America and went through a program called Building Excellent Schools in which her whole pathway was to build this school and to do great things, and she's doing it, and we're so proud to have her in our network. Cars will tell you National School Choice Week. This is the first ever exercise in the country um, to get every segment of school choice in America together to say we need these choices. These choices are so important for families, just for the reasons that Senator Parker just talked about. Um, we should be about creating a system where it's all about an individual student and what they need, and it's all about allowing our incredible educators to bring what they know best right into the educational marketplace. That's what School Choice does. And it is becoming a home to the cure in so many ways. So many fabulous teachers have brought us such amazing concepts, things we hadn't even dreamed of 20 years ago when I started doing this work. I um, had the privilege of working here in Arizona on this. So today, we mostly um, want to introduce you to the families who are taking advantage of school choice and remind you that school choice in Arizona is not just the choice to attend the local school down the street. That's a great choice. It's also um, the right to attend a public charter school, to have a scholarship to attend a private school, to just attend a private school if you have the means to do that, to attend school online um, in Arizona, to have a tutoring program after school. It's also a school choice to school your children at home. All of those things are critically important, um, and Arizona has created through policies that um, the legislature has, has created now over the past 20 years, the opportunity for kids to take advantage of those different settings in many different ways, be it tax credits, um, direct funding of students in the public charter schools, scholarshiping programs, voucher programs, whatever it takes. Our goal is that Arizona public education is about the students, um, that we not worry about um, pitting systems against each other. That's not what it's about. We ought to be all about doing the best we can wherever we are in this system and making sure that our colleagues are doing their best job as well. My youngest daughter has a medical uh, problem. Um, it's a health issue, and she had missed a lot of public schools uh, according to that time uh, schedule that they had set. She would miss two to three weeks, once, twice, three times a year, depending. She was constantly late for school um, because of treatments that she had to take in the morning time. And she was, uh, she was failing. And it does something to a child's self-esteem when they are not um, at the same level as their peers. We decided to choose um, virtual academy because 
it allowed her to go go and um, meet the standards at her own pace because it was needed. And I think that there needs to be options in our society, in our community with schools, because every family is different. And right now we have a school system that is the one size fits all. And I think that it works so well is because it does accommodate uh, to individual need. And um, so I know the results I've seen have been quite successful with my daughter in just this short time that she has been online. And um, it does take a lot of self-determination and uh, self-discipline in order to meet these standards. Um, because you don't do it for them. There's not a teacher there. Uh, there's, so she, she, it is teaching her uh, things that, um, you know, I've seen a change in her and it's, it's been good. So I like, I like the school choice and, and uh, I would support it. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to share with you some of the stories of how school choice is working in Arizona. Um, it really does change more than the life of just the student. It changes the life of the entire family, the community, the future of the child, and the future of what they do.